We've been working on some Windows XP videos to sort of remember a time before all the turmoil, get back to the past where things were wonderful. Remember when the real world wasn't as bad as it is now? I'm talking like back in the Windows XP days when things were slightly better and there were a lot of good games back in the Windows XP, Windows Vista, and just before that in Windows 98 and Windows 2000 days. And that's statistically true. If you look at Metacritic, there were way more games released back in those days that rated, you know, 9 or 90% and higher compared to nowadays. Just nowhere near as many games that are rated that highly. Well, indie games maybe making this, making things change, but let's remember what it was like back then. In this video, I'm going to cover all of the software that I used to use back in the Windows XP days. Maybe you'll get some ideas if you're putting together a nostalgic Windows XP rig on a few pieces of software that you can run on your XP machine. And also, I want to note, this is not the hardware video, but I do want to note that there are a few things in here that were borderline Windows Vista. Just sort of an amalgamation of all the nostalgia from that time period all thrown into one case. This case is like something you could probably use from Windows 98 days, Windows 2000 days. I'm still using it here with Windows XP. And I've also got some modern stuff in here too. Anyway, let's jump in and take a look at my Windows XP desktop. As you can see, it's nice and dark. And when you normally jump into Windows XP, you'll notice the large sort of gradient on the bottom with the start bar. It's blue and you've got the big start button. I, I did away with that immediately and changed it up using the UX theme patcher. I use a dark theme always on Windows XP and I actually enjoyed my Windows XP setup better than Windows Vista with the arrow uh, nonsense. It was just too much for my taste. But you know, it's subjective, so whatever you like. If you like, you know, rounded corners, gradients, and transparent backgrounds, go crazy, have Vista all you like. But if you want to uh, and apply, apply a really cool theme, check out some of these that I've got. I'll throw the links in the description. And normally I do run a darker theme, but it was too hard to see um, especially for someone who's not used to Windows XP, it was too hard to see what was going on, so I've elected to go with this one just to, you know, for demonstration purposes. Anyway, let's jump in and take a look at all of the software that I use. So I've tried to recreate my Windows XP as it was back in 2005 and 6 when I was using a computer very much like this one, a little different. I think I had a Radeon 2900 XT as opposed to this card, which came out a week before um, Windows Vista. This is the GTX or the uh, 8800 GTX from BFG that's inside there. You can see the video on the system. It's in the description. Just go ahead and click on that and I'll show you the system I put together for this. But right now let's go through just my Windows XP. And the first thing you'll notice is the start button is really different, especially if you're a zoomer and you've never seen Windows XP. So back in the day, the start was, this is the Windows XP start, which was a huge leap forward from the Windows uh, 98 start, which was just you hit start, it didn't have any real shortcuts, it was just a list of your programs. It was basically just this that you're seeing here. So the way this works is when you hit start, you can't start typing and just let any program pop up. You have to click on programs and browse to the program you want and then you can open it up that way. If you just start typing, like if I hit the start button and press C, it'll just open up whatever shortcut starts with that letter. So it just opened up the control panel. Well, there's a program that came out that made this very easy, and it's called Launchy. So all I did was install it, and now I press Alt Space. And right here in the middle of the screen, I've got a, a little thing I can type stuff. So there we go. And now we can bring up our control panel by typing that if I want to play a game. It also works for that, just Alt Space. Hey, it also has memory, so it remembers what you did last, and it brings up a hierarchy of all the stuff here uh, that you might be looking for. It basically just looks at all the shortcuts and says, Oh, let me build a little database for you. So I find Launchy to be a very necessary program when you're using Windows XP. Um, so after I install all the drivers and Launchy, I usually install FUBAR because it's good to have some music playing. But one thing I want to note about FUBAR is they say that the new versions don't work with Windows XP. However, the portable installation worked just fine on this machine. Uh, and by that, I mean I installed it on another machine and just grab the folder and I'm opening up version 1.5.3. There may be a new version now, but I haven't updated mine in a little while and it worked totally fine. Uh, you know what? There, there is a Windows uh, store version of this now, which is kind of weird, but yeah, it opened up just fine. I've got all my, you know, my plugins, my panels, everything. It's all hooked up to the NAS so I can just listen to music. So I got that going. And this is something that really hasn't changed much since the Windows XP days. I've, I've been running it 
almost the exact same way. I can bring my lyrics up over here for some reason. This one's not connecting to the internet and bringing up the lyrics right now, but I'll, I'll have to add the right database, but you know. Next up, as sort of a, an alternate version of your regular Windows Task Manager, which works, right? You've got all this stuff here. You can check your performance. There's also something called the, uh, the Process Explorer from Sys Internals. And this will not only give you way more information about everything that's going on, right? It'll also let you set the affinity and the priority of the different things that are running. And if something is here, you can just go right here and be like, uh, you know, don't, don't allow this to, to start. You know, you can kill stuff, you can restart it. Um, and, and you can tell stuff to start with the computer or not, you know, run it, log in. This is a pretty handy extra program to have. I still end up using this one just for quickly, like, ending tasks on certain things and stuff like that. Just Control-Shift-Escape will bring that up. But having Process Explorer as an additional um, thing is nice to have. So now let's open up Firefox. As far as Firefox goes, the newest version you can get on Windows XP is 52.9.0, 32-bit version. Just grab the ESR version. This stuff to Google if you're wondering, you know, you need to get this version and the ESR update. So got to grab that, right? Now you're probably going to need, and there's the Process Explorer. All these links are going to be in the description so you can easily download everything. If you need a PDF document reader, Sumatra will get the job done. It's pretty lightweight and, you know, you can just install it just in case you need to look at some PDFs. It's whatever. So AVG Antivirus. In 2015, they released the last version that was compatible with Windows XP and that's version 2015.0.5863. You can grab it on old apps or on oldversion.com, either one. For some reason, oldversion.com was not loading images and stuff on the XP machine, so I'm using old apps just to show you, but you can grab it on old version as well, uh, whichever one you like. And then after you install this, it will download and, and update. It's, it's updated two or three times since I've used it, so downloading new definitions and stuff, so it's definitely still working. Now you're gonna need to open up all your zip, rar, and 7-zip files, so I recommend grabbing 7-zip. And uh, the latest version that came out that works with Windows XP is 9.38. If you're curious about your CPU, you can get an old version of CPU-Z. And I'm going to go ahead and open up this. I don't think I've downloaded it yet. So it's weird. Oldapps.com has been giving me some server errors, whereas... Is it going to load images? Hey, it's working all of a sudden. Oh, well. I'm going to grab CPU-Z because I want to show you something. If you haven't seen the hardware video yet, there we go. We actually have an Intel Xeon in here. It's the X5470. Grabbed this from Hong Kong and they soldered a couple of pins together to make it compatible with the 775 motherboards. We've got a P45 motherboard in here. As you can see, there we go. And it's the uh, Gigabyte, that nice Intel chipset that unfortunately only does Crossfire. I thought I was going to get SLI to work with some hacks, but we'll keep trying. And if you want a more full-featured file browser uh, slash Windows Explorer, not the web browser, but like, you know, Explorer, you can grab Total Commander. Uh, I don't find that I need it all that often, so it's up to you. And then I want some codecs in case I have some videos or whatever, maybe some DivX files or something I want to play, some H.264. You can just grab an old version of the K-Lite codec packs for Windows, the full or the standard. Either one of those will do just fine. And, um, you know, if you want Media Player Classic, you can get that as well. And then on top of that, I usually like to grab VLC Player, because this does a few things that, you know, this doesn't, but they, you know, between the two of them, they pretty much cover everything. All right, now I imagine if you're installing Windows XP, you're going to be messing around with some ISO files. Uh, a lot of times it'll be just an actual CD, but if you have old ISO files and stuff, you're going to need to mount those. So I grab an old version of Daemon Tools, and you can grab some other stuff from Sliceloft if you wanted to, if you're going to be making copies of, of, of stuff. You know, we can get some, uh, yeah, 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 21 days left of my trial. Probably not going to use as much because I've already burned all the stuff I wanted to burn. Any DVD will basically help you to copy or uh, extract the contents of any disc. You can also get DVD decryptor, uh, which is pretty cool if you wanted to, you know, copy a, a movie or something like that. But between the two of them, any DVD and, and DVD decryptor, they work really well. And then if you're actually going to be um, making ISO files yourself or cloning stuff, then I recommend grabbing Clone DVD. You can get an old version of that. I'm not going to tell you how to hack any of these things or crack them or whatever. If you're dealing with some new stuff on your computer, well, these are pretty cool too. But I, I don't know. I'm just, I don't know anything about these programs. If you have multiple monitors, I do like to run Display Fusion, even though it is sometimes a bit of a, a resource hog. All right, so Display Fusion is great for like multiple monitor setups, 
being able to span one background across all the monitors and that sort of thing, um, that's pretty handy. But it'll also allow you to set up some different snapping profiles and stuff like that. So way more options than you get with Windows. Now to capture the screen right now, you may see that it's not perfectly smooth, but I'm capturing it 1080p at as high of a quality as I can. You need to use Cam Studio. This is a version of Open Broadcaster that doesn't rely on DirectX 10 that I don't know about. Um, you guys could tell me, but yeah, you need to get Cam Studio. Cam Studio is cool because it will work with several different codecs out there. I grabbed this old Xvid codec just because it's, you know, old times, but from 2012, it still works just fine with this old setup. Earlier, I was talking about how I got this really cool dark theme. Uh, you're going to need the UX Theme Patcher, and you can go grab that with the uh, link in the description or uxthemepatcher.com. One of the things that really sucks about using an older version of Firefox is that Mozilla does not support it at all. Like, you've got like two themes. I've got this stupid theme with all the speckled stars that are really annoying in the background. I've got this going. Um, but, you know, when it comes to like add-ons and extensions and stuff, uBlock Origin, I had to go to GitHub and get an old version here. You, when you click on this, it will actually install um, and ask you if you want to download it or whatever. I imagine for other add-ons and stuff that you need, you may have to do the same thing, or you could try Opera. Um, I'm really not going to be using this that much for web browsing. I'm mostly just going to be installing games and playing them and stuff like that and, and listening to some music here and there while I'm sitting at the computer. But, you know, and I won't, I won't really be doing much else. All right, so one other thing I wanted to mention. If you go to the Internet Archive, you can get an older version of Steam because the new versions of Steam, they don't support Windows XP at all. So you can come here and you can grab this version of Steam and you can open it up in the file and log in. Now, some people online, I've seen uh, them say that it works and they can connect to the server. But when I tried to connect to the server, it would not connect and it even said like this OS is no longer supported. So it wouldn't even connect to the Steam server. So Steam and GOG, I mean, GOG didn't even have a launcher. Um, you can still go to GOG and grab games, grab the EXE files and install them. That works great. You know, just like, you know, if you want to like download a backup copy on GOG and then double click to install it oh yeah it works just fine you can install whatever you like so gog is a much much better platform for retro gaming and steam i don't really know if there's going to be an option for that so all in all um would i recommend using this as a daily driver no so many old programs i just don't have any more support right and then on top of that a lot of the programs that used to support it no longer do and then with games yeah there are some benefits to playing on the original hardware especially for like a game like i was talking about earlier like arx fatalis that game really likes to run on the original hardware but there are so many people who are enthusiastic about these games and they're constantly updating them creating you know user-made patches and stuff for windows 10 and linux so sometimes it's better to just stay on your new machine and only pop over here when you really want that nostalgia. And right now this even feels a little weird having this, you know, 24 inch 1080p monitor. A lot of the games I'm opening up don't even support widescreen. So this is, you know, I found the, the oldest TN panel I could find, right? This Asus, it's not that bad. It's got HDMI and, and it's got DVI. Anyway, uh, that's the software that I'm using and that's how I used Windows XP. I didn't install a lot of junk on my Windows XP, as you can see. I didn't install, it's mostly just games. And I, of course, back in the day, I did have more uh, productivity software installed on here, some Adobe stuff and all that because I was editing videos and doing stuff like that, but, but I don't need that right now. And this is really all I need. And as far as Office, I just ran LibreOffice or OpenOffice and that's that's basically it. But I don't think a lot of people are going to be running Office on this anymore. I think they're going to be running on Windows, Windows 10. So let me know if there's anything on here that you think belongs on a retro gaming rig that is not included. Let me know in the comments. I'm very curious. And also, let's see if Epic Pants works. Well, Epic Pants works great. And while you're online, you can go over here and grab one of our new t-shirts. And I want to mention that all the hardware that I'm using right here on the desk is Fennec gear. Got the arctic fox mouse and these work just fine with windows xp but a little disclaimer the first time i plugged them in uh, windows xp had to think for like five minutes in order to install it was like installing stuff and nothing could move but after like just letting it sit here for like five minutes then all of a sudden everything worked although the usb stuff was installed that, that might just be something that's weird with this motherboard but 
you know, depending on your motherboard, you may have the same same issue or maybe not. But now that it's been installed, every time it restarts, it just works. And also, we've got this. This is the mother membrane keyboard, which is nice and quiet. I'm sure you didn't hear it at all. Didn't even think about it, right? While I was making this video. So that's one of the reasons why uh, we have this is because it's good for streaming and stuff. Um, and it's also the best membrane keyboard I could find myself because I went and looked everywhere for these things. And it's water resistant and beer and coffee resistant. So, you know, splash around with it if you want to. I don't care. Anyway, those are over on epicpants.com. Let me know what you think and I'll see you in the comments. So that's my Windows XP software tour. Um, I haven't started working on the gaming yet. I frankly don't have a lot of time, but I was thinking maybe I would stream with this because I've got a couple of capture cards over here, right? And these capture cards, they're, they're HDMI. The system doesn't have HDMI. It's got, you know, a, a GTX 80 or an 8800 GTX. Everything's backwards now. It's got an 8800 GTX in there, but um, it works just fine with a um, DVI to HDMI adapter. So I'm probably going to you know, plug that in and maybe play some games on this. You don't have to use a console um, when it comes to like one of these little streaming things. You can you can use a computer. So maybe let me know what you let me know what you think. Should I do some game streaming with a Windows XP system? I mean, I'll obviously be using a different system to do the streaming, but let me know. I'm curious. So there you have it. Be sure to check out EpicPants.com. Grab yourself one of these and make sure you take your cheesecake out of the oven. I'll see you later. So if you're building yourself a nostalgic XP rig, you're living in